of the chapter 7 review packet. Number one says find the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a convex hexagon. Remember the formula for sum of the interior angles is n minus 2 times 180. This time they say it's a hexagon so we know that n is 6. So 6 minus 2 times 180. 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 times 180 is 720 degrees. Make sure you use your calculator on that. <coughs> so the answer there would be B. Number two, make sure you're looking at the answers because I'm probably not always going to say what the number is. Find the sum of the measures of the interior angles of the given figure. So we have that given figure. We count the sides. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, that's a hexagon. So we just got done doing that one. So we use the exact same thing. Six minus two times 180. Uh, sum of the interior angles would be 720. Number three, the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a polygon is 1440. So this time they're telling us that the sum of the interior angles is 1440. So I'm going to use the same formula, n minus 2 times 180, but this time I know it comes out to equal 1440. And you're going to have to solve for n, solve for how many sides it has. First thing we're going to do, divide both sides by 180. So you grab your calculator, 1440 divided by 180, and I end up with uh, 8. So you got these cancel out. You got n minus 2 equals 8. Add 2 to both sides. So you're just using the formula backwards. These cancel out, you're left with n equals 10. So how many sides does this shape have? It has 10 sides. Uh, the, a name, the name of a 10-sided figure is a decagon. So find that answer there on your paper. Number four. Number four, they give us a shape that looks something like this. Almost looks like it's a kite, but it's not. That's 68 degrees. This is 135 degrees. Uh, this is 110 degrees. This is X. They want us to find X. We don't know it's a kite, but we do know it's got one, two, three, four sides. If it's got four sides, then all the angles uh, have to add up to 360 degrees, so we just set up an equation. So we do x plus 68 plus 110 plus 135. All those together should equal, ignore that stray mark, all four of those interior angles should add up to equal 360 degrees. Collect our like terms, use your calculator, so you got 68 plus 110 plus 135, that equals 313, so x plus 313 equals 360, subtract 313 on both sides, 360 minus 313, grab your calculator again, and you end up with 47. So x equals 47 on that one. Number five, we count the sides on that. We got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like eight sides, so it's an octagon. First thing you got to do is use that formula, eight minus two times 180, to find out what all eight of those angles should add up to equal. Uh, that gives you six times 180. Grab your calculator again, six times 180 equals 1080. So the eight angles of an octagon should always add up to uh, 1080. Then I'm just going to start with the 6x there. I got a 6x, I got another 6x. So 6x plus 6x, that's two of the angles, plus 124, plus, I'm just going around this shape, collecting up all the angles, 140, plus 119, plus 102, plus 132 plus another 132. All that together should add up to equal the total which of this uh, interior angles, which we figured out was 1080. Got to do this formula first to figure out what they should all add up to be. Now, next thing I'm going to do, since I wrote it all out like this, I'm going to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just to make sure I got all eight angles, which I did this time. 6x and 6x give us 12x. 
grab your calculator and add up all of these. When I add them all up, I get 749. And all that should still total up to 1080. Subtract 749 on both sides. Doing the algebra. These cancel out, you're left with 12x equals 1080 minus 749. You end up with 331. Divide both sides by 12. And I came up with x equals about 27.6. Uh, and that looks like answer A on that one. So it didn't come out even. Remember, x doesn't have to come out even. If you're looking for n, it has to come out even because that's the number of sides. But x can be anything. Number six, look at number six. This time we're dealing with exterior angles. Well, if you remember, the exterior angles of any polygon should always add up to be 360 degrees. This is a pentagon, so it's got five exterior angles. So we're just going to take them. I'm going to take the 2x, that's one of the angles, plus 4x, that's another angle plus the 56, I'm just going around and collecting up all those exterior angles, plus 57, plus 85. All those should always add up to equal, because their exterior angles should always add up to equal 360 degrees. Collect like terms, 2x and 4x give you 6x, plus uh, then grab your calculator and add these three up. When I add them all up, I got 198. That equals 360 still. Subtract 198 on both sides. You end up with 6x. 360 minus 198. 162. Divide both sides by 6. End up with x equals... 27. Hopefully that's one of the answers on there. Looks like B. <clears throat> Number seven, they say a convex pentagon has exterior angles. Uh, and they give us all those. There's quite a few problems on here where you may have to draw the picture. This time they say it's a pentagon. So a pentagon should have five sides. Now they, they're talking about the exterior angles. So we want all these angles out here. All five of those. They tell us that uh, one of the exterior angles is 83. One of them is, another one's 83. Uh, another one is 26. Now my picture probably doesn't look right. Just It doesn't have to look exactly what they were describing to us. Uh, what is the measure of the fifth angle? So this is, we're going to let it be X. So we got a pentagon. Well, we know that all the angles of a pentagon should add up to be three, or all the exterior angles of a pentagon should add up to be 360 degrees. So I'm just going to set up an equation. X plus 83 plus 83 plus 26 plus 46. Make sure we got them all. One, two, three, four, five angles. All those are exterior angles, so they should all add up to 360. Grab your calculator and add all of these together. When I add them all together, I got 238. Hopefully that's right. Equals 360. Subtract 238 on both sides. So grab your calculator. Oops. Grab your calculator and subtract 238 on both sides. 360 minus 238. up with x equals 122. I should say 122. Uh, hopefully that's one of the answers on there. So the fifth angle would be 122. Number eight, find the values of x and y if that shape is a parallelogram. Well, if this shape is a parallelogram, they're telling us it's a parallelogram. This side is 24. 
and this side's x minus 2. Well, in a parallelogram, these opposite sides have to be congruent. So x minus 2 would have to equal 24, and we just solve that. Add 2 to both sides. You end up with x equals 26. So that's half of our answer. Then we look at the other one. They tell us this is y. This is 11. Those two sides have to be congruent to each other. So then that means y would have to equal 11. Hopefully that's one of the answers down there where x is 26 and y is 11. Number 9. On well, number 9, I'm going to set it up for you, but I'm not actually going to do it. Uh, they give us this parallelogram. A, B, C, and D. And they tell us that sigma AB is x squared minus 11. x squared minus, or 18, not 11. x squared minus 18. CD is 7x. Uh, the measure of angle D is 5y plus 31. 5y plus 31. And the measure of angle B is 96. So look at this. First to find y. If this is a parallelogram, then we know opposite angles have to be congruent. So 5y plus 31 would have to equal 96, and we can solve that. That's going to tell us what y is once you solve that, and I'm going to let you solve it yourself. Uh, then on the other one, we know that opposite sides, if it's a parallelogram, have to be congruent. So to find x, we'd set up this equation. x squared minus 18 has to equal... 7x. Well, that's got an x squared and a 7x in it. So we can't solve it that way. We're going to have to factor. And the factor, first thing we got to do is move everything to one side, get zero on the other side. So if I move that 7x over, it's going to become a negative 7x. So it's going to look like this. x squared minus 7x. We can't put those together because they're not like terms. Still minus 18 equals zero. And you're going to set up your parentheses. And you're going to factor those. Hopefully you remember the factors of x squared. It's going to give you x and x. They're going to go there. Then you've got to find the factors of negative 18. And when you add those factors of negative 18 together, it should give you the negative 7. And they're going to, those two factors that are going to fit in there are going to go there and there. Uh, and that would give you what x can be, what y can be. Uh, x may be able to be two different numbers. You'd have to plug it back in and see once you get it. Number 10, a parallelogram is formed by the supports that attach a basketball backboard and the rim to the wall. The angles change as the basket apparatus is taken out and put away. Find the measure of angle BCD when the measure of angle DAB is 32 degrees. So number 10, I'm not going to draw the whole basketball setup and everything, but they give us something that looks like this. Oops, that's horrible. Ignore that. Looks something like that. This is A. This is B. That's C. That's D. They tell us that angle BCD, BCD, that's this angle right here, or uh, that's what we're trying to find. And they tell us that angle DAB, DAB is this angle up here is 32 degrees. In a parallelogram, opposite angles have to be congruent to each other. And remember, consecutive angles would have to be supplementary. So they should be able to tell you either one of those and you could find it. Well, in this case, those are opposite angles. So the angle we're looking for has to be 32. <coughs> Number 11, it says find the coordinates of the intersections of the diagonals. Uh, and I graphed it already. You could graph it if it helps you out. We really don't need to graph it. All we need to know is that this is a diagonal. So from F to D is a diagonal. And from G to E is a diagonal. Uh, find the coordinates of the intersection of the diagonal, and they tell us it's a parallelogram. Well, if that's a parallelogram, then these two diagonals are going to bisect each other. So we know that that point right there, where they intersect that, has to be the midpoint. So all we really have to do is find the midpoint of one of them. If we found the midpoint of both of them, it should be the same.
So if we're looking at FD, and we want to find the midpoint, remember midpoint formula, you add the x's, divide by 2, add the y's, divide by 2. So for FD, we look at F, the x's, negative 4 is one of the x's. For D, it's negative 2, so negative 4 plus a negative 2 divided by 2. Ignore those straight lines, that, and that, ignore that, that shouldn't be there, it should be a comma. And so let's rewrite that, because it looks off a little bit. So negative 4 plus a negative 2 divided by 2. The y's for F and D, uh, 3 and negative 3, so 3 plus a negative 3 divided by 2. <coughs> negative 4 plus negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. 3 plus a negative 3 is 0. 0 divided by 2 is 0. That should be the midpoint. See if that's one of the answers down there, and yes, it's answer A. Now we could also, again, we could go through and we could find the midpoint of segment GE, uh, and it should be the same because if it's a parallelogram, then the diagonals have to bisect each other, so they intersect at the, at the midpoints. Number 12, they want us to find where the fourth, uh, where the fourth point should be. <coughs> I've graphed the original three points, so we have something that looks like this right now. So it looks like the fourth point probably going to be, to make this a parallelogram, the fourth point would have to be somewhere up in here. So we could probably make a guess and get close to it, but what has to be true, if we look at this segment, segment ED, wherever we put this other point up here, wherever it's at, segment ED and this segment have to be parallel to each other, so it has to have the same slope. So if I'm looking at ED, to go from E to D, I go up one, so the slope here is up one, that's our rise, and over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, we can do the same thing from point G. Uh, we go up one and over seven, but that puts us over here somewhere, that's not going to work. So what we actually have to do is go uh, down one and to the left seven. Down one, and to left one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we look at that, if we drew in that, that sort of looks like a parallelogram. My circle was way off, or not way off, but it was off a little bit. So that's our point. We want to find the coordinates of that point. We just use the slope, but use it backwards to figure out where that point was going to go. And now we just find the coordinates. We move to the left one, so that's a negative one, and then up one, two, three, four, five. So up five, so negative one, five should be the correct answer. Hopefully that's one of them that's on there. <coughs> All right, on 13, they say find the value of x that makes this a quadrilateral, a parallelogram, and I drew it all out, and they tell us that AE is 5x plus 28, uh, CE is 3x plus 36. Well, we know in a parallelogram the diagonals bisect each other, so those two have to be equal to each other. So 5x plus 28 has to equal 3x plus 36. Subtract 3x on both sides. You end up with 2x plus 28 equals 36. These two cancel out. <coughs> Subtract 28 on both sides, you end up with 2x equals, these two cancel out, equals uh, 36 minus 28 is 8, divide by 2, x equals 4. Uh, they ask us to find the value of x, so that should be your answer. Number 14, find the measures of the numbered angles. Uh, and they tell us this time that this shape is a rhombus. The shape is a rhombus. Mine might not look like a rhombus. Just imagine it is. That's R, that's S, 
that's a T, that's Q, this is 31 degrees, uh, this is angle 4, angle 3, angle 1, and angle 2. We want to find all four of those angles. <coughs> Measure of angle 1, let's find it first. If this is a rhombus, then we know that the diagonals in the middle here, they form right angles, so angle 1 has to be 90 degrees. Measure of angle 2, and angle 2, we know that the diagonals of a rhombus bisect the angles. So if this is 31, that's 31. That means this angle has to be 31, that angle has to be 31. We probably should have just went through and found all these angles first, but since I already started marking them down, I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. Measure of angle 3 and the measure of angle 4, well, they're going to end up being the same because the diagonals bisect this angle, so they got to be the same. Well, the way we can find them, there's a couple different ways we could find them. We know that this angle is 90. We could add up the three angles of the triangle should add up to 180. So add these two up, subtract from 180. Or you know that this whole angle, which is 62 degrees, and this whole angle, angle S, should be supplementary to each other because consecutive angles in a uh, parallelogram or a rhombus, either one, uh, Rhombus is a parallelogram. I have to add up to 180. So we could just take 180 minus 62, get 118. Well, that angle is not 118, but what we want to do is split that in half. So 118 divided by 2, which is 59. So angle 4 has to be 59 degrees, and angle 3 has to be 59 degrees. And hopefully that's one of, if you look through there, that's one of the answers on there. Number 15, they tell us that this shape is a rectangle on a lot of these problems. You've got to draw it. You've got to draw it and then label the stuff the way they said it. So I drew it and I labeled this QRST. Uh, QS, well QS is a diagonal. So they're telling us that that whole thing right there uh, is 20X minus 5. And then RT, well that's the other whole diagonal. That whole diagonal right there is 14x plus 7. In a rectangle, because they told us this shape was a rectangle, we know that the diagonals have to be congruent to each other. So 20x minus 5 has to equal 14x plus 7. Subtract 14x on both sides. 14x you end up with 6x minus 5 equals 7. Add 5 to both sides. You end up with 6x equals 12. Divide both sides by 6. You end up with x equals 2. They didn't ask us to find x. They asked us to find the length of the diagonals. So we want to plug back into one of those. I'm going to plug back in right here. So 20 times 2 minus 5. 20 times 2 is 40. 40 minus 5 is 35. So that diagonal is 35. Well, in a rectangle, we know that both diagonals are the same, so both of them should be 35. Number 16. They give us this shape. It's supposed to be some kind of charger. This is M. That's N. That's J. That's K. They tell us this charger is an isosceles trapezoid. Uh, they want us to find the measures of angle J, K, and M when the angle N is 140. Well, if angle N is 140 and this is an isosceles trapezoid, so we know the legs are congruent, then we know that these upper base angles, these top two angles, have to be the same. So the measure of angle M has to be the same as that one, which is 140. And we know that these angles, one's uh, one from the top one from the bottom base have to add up to 180. So we take 180 minus 140, so we get the measure of angle J is 40. Well, the measure of angle J and the measure of angle K have to be the same, so the measure of angle K has to also be 40. So those are your three angles. Hopefully that's one of the answers on there. Number 17, find the length of the mid-segment. I'm just going to draw this real quick. I'm not going to put in everything that they put in. We know that this is 21. This is 37. 
find the length of that mid segment. We use the formula mid segment equals base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2. So the length of the mid segment should be one of the bases plus the other base, and then we're going to divide that by 2. You grab your calculator, you end up with 58 divided by 2, which is 29. Hopefully that's one of the answers on there. Number 18, uh, again, I didn't draw the whole picture, but they give us this information. And we know that the original shape is a trapezoid, and they want us to find the mid-segment, or I'm sorry, they don't want us to find the mid-segment this time. They want us to find one of the sides, one of the bases. On this one, a couple different ways you could do it. You could set up the formula. The mid-segment has to equal one of the bases, which is 27, plus the other base we don't know, so we're going to make it x divided by 2, could set it up that way, or you could just sort of work it backwards. Here we're just going to multiply both sides by 2, that gets rid of these 2's, you end up with 32 equals 27 plus x, subtract 27 on both sides, and you end up with x equals 5. So this side over here, this base of this trapezoid would have to be 5, and then you can make sure that, it's, that it makes sense. If we got 5 on this side to get to the mid-segment, that'd be 11. To get from there to there, that's another 11, so it works out. Uh, number 19. Number 19, they tell us this time we have a kite, uh, a scenic overlook which extends over a ravine is shaped like a kite. They tell us that this angle is 40 degrees, this angle is 112. In a kite, we know that these two sides are congruent. We know that these two sides are congruent. And something else we know in a kite is that these two angles have to be congruent. We know that it's got four sides. Since it's got four sides, all the angles should add up to be 360. We could make this one x, this one x. So x plus x plus 40 plus 112. All four of those angles should add up to be 360 degrees. Collect your like terms, you got 2x plus 156 equals 360. Subtract 156 on both sides. You end up with 2x equals 204. Divide both sides by 2. Divide by 2 and you end up with x equals 102. So each of those angles should be 102 degrees, uh, unless I did something wrong. 40 is 156. The answer to that one should be 102 degrees. The answer. I don't see that answer as part of the answers on there, but it should be 102. Number 20. <coughs> what additional conditions would make the quadrilateral ABCD a parallelogram? They tell us that AF is congruent to uh, CF, so that means one of the diagonals is being bisected. Uh, the other thing that would tell us, or that would finish out that part, is that the other diagonal is being bisected. Well, for the other diagonal to be bisected, then F would have to be the midpoint of segment BD. So F is the midpoint of BD, would finish that, that out. Uh, 21, decide whether the quadrilateral is a rectangle rhombus, square, or parallelogram. 21, you're going to have to do this uh, a bunch on the test, so make sure. I, I've graphed it here already. They have a graph for you there on your paper. First thing you want to do, decide what shape it is. You're going to check. We know it's a quadrilateral already because it's got four sides. We want to check, see if it's a parallelogram. The way we check that is we find the slopes. So I'm going to start out. I'm going to find the slope of segment BC. Find BC, we just count. Rise over run. We go up one, two, three. Oops, one, two, three, four. So we go up four, slope is four, and over one, two. 
Well, the slope of AD, and this you're going to have to write all this out on your test. Find the slope of each one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. So slope of AD, you go up 4 over 2. That tells us that those two, uh, they have the same slope. Same slopes. So we know that they are parallel. So we know that these two sides are parallel. Well, that's not enough to tell us it's a parallelogram yet. We've got to do the other two sides. So I do segment uh, AB. For segment AB, I go up 1 and to the left 2. So up 1 to the left 2, so negative 2. And I should have put an M in there. That's the slope of that one. And then I want DC, segment DC. Those two should have the same slopes if, they're, if this is a parallel, uh, parallelogram. So I go up one to the left two. So that's one to the left two, that's negative two. So that tells us those slopes are the same. So we know that they are parallel. <coughs> so right now we know it's a parallelogram. Then the next thing we look at, you got to be careful here because the next thing we're going to look at is decide if any of these angles are right angles. Well, when we look at these slopes, right now looking at them, they don't look like they're, that they're opposite reciprocals of each other. But if we would have reduced these two slopes down and put it 2 over 1 and 2 over 1, then we look at these two and we can see that they are opposite reciprocals. So I'm going to write slopes are opposite reciprocals. So has right angles. And what that tells us is right now we know it's a rectangle. So we know it's a rectangle. So we know it's a quadrilateral, we know it's a parallelogram, we know it's a rectangle. Next thing we need to check, we need to check see if it's a, a, a rhombus. To be a rhombus, two of the sides have to be the same, two consecutive sides have to be the same length. So we could do segment BC and segment CD maybe. So if I do BC and I find the length of segment BC, we're going to use the distance formula. So for B and C, look, uh, if you look over here, for B, your coordinates for B are negative 2, 0. And for C, the coordinates are 0, 4. And let's go ahead and do D also. The coordinates of it are 2, 3. And we could find the coordinates of A also. But we only need to find lengths of two of the sides. So for uh, segment BC, we want to find that length, so I'm going to set this up. I'm going to do the x's, negative 2 minus 0 squared plus the y's, 0 minus 4 squared. Do the math here, negative 2 minus 0 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, 0 minus 4 is negative 4, negative 4 squared is 16, uh, 4 plus 16 is 20, so we want the square root of 20. Square root of 20 uh, is, if you grab your calculator and find the square root of 20, is about 4.5, let's say. I rounded it off. So it's about 4.5. That's for segment BC. Now if we do segment CD, if this is a rhombus, then segment CD should come out to be the same. So I'm going to do the x's, 0 minus 2 squared plus the y's, 4 minus 3 squared. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So we come up with the square root of 5. The square root of 5 Grab your calculator again, do the square root of 5, 
is about 2.2. We look at these two, they're not the same. So they're not congruent. Well, if it, they're not congruent, then it can't be a rhombus. So the very best name that we can give it is a rectangle. That's the very best name we can give it. And we don't even have to check, see if it's a square, because if it's not both a rectangle and a rhombus, then it can't be a square. <coughs> Number 22. Doing the same thing on number 22. Do all the same stuff. Find the slopes. See if it's a parallelogram. If it's a parallelogram, see if the slopes are opposite reciprocals from here to here. Then it could be a rectangle. If it's not a rectangle, then you check two consecutive sides. See if it's a rhombus. If it's both a rectangle and a rhombus, then it's going to be a square. 23. 23, you do the same thing as on 21. So Use those two, uh, you're still doing the same thing. First thing, check every single time is slopes. Check and see if it's a parallelogram. Then you want to check to see if those slopes, if any of them are right angles, and then use the distance formula to see if any consecutive sides are the same length as each, each other. Then that's going to make it a rectangle. Problem 24. Problem 24, they give us, uh, it says find the measure of all the interior angles. They give us a shape and it's a five-sided figure, so it's a pentagon. First thing you're going to have to do on this is use that N minus 2 times 180. In place of N, I'm going to stick in 2. So 5 minus 2 times 180. Hopefully you got this memorized by now. 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 times 180 is 540. So all five angles of that pentagon should add up to equal 540. Then you're just going to set up an equation. So 7x, that's one of the angles, plus 7x, that's another angle, plus uh, 6x, plus 3x, plus 4x. All 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of those angles should all add up to be the sum of the interior angles, which is 540. Collect like, like terms. 7 and 7 give you 14, plus 6 is 20, plus 3 is 23, plus 4 is 27. So we got 27x equals 540. Divide both sides by 27. That's going to tell us what x is. Grab your calculator and divide that, and you end up with 20. So x equals 20. They wanted us to find all the angles. So we got to take that 20 and plug back in. So if I plug into the 7x first, 20 times 7 is 140, so that's one of the angles. Then the next angle is another 7x, so 20 times uh, 7 is 140, so that's the second angle. Then 6 times 20 is 120, then 3 times 20 is 60, then 4 times 20 is 80. Those should be your five answers. If you add all those up, they should add up to equal 540. You might check to make sure that I did all my math right. Number 25. On 25, graph that and do the same thing that we did on 21, 22, 23. Uh, so you're just going to, it says show that it's a parallelogram, so the first thing you're going to, or actually if they just want you to show it's a parallelogram, then all you got to do is find the slopes. Find the slopes of all the sides, and opposite sides should have the same slopes. So find those slopes. Once you, once you have a graph, find those slopes, and these two sides, this side and this side should have the same slopes. Show me that. This side and this side should have the same slopes. And you could just do slopes by rise over run. Number 26. Give the most descriptive name, same idea on that one. Again, show your work, same idea. So you're going to find the slopes. Then uh, 
That's going to tell you whether it's a parallelogram or not. Then you can check uh, slopes of two consecutive sides, see if it's a rectangle, because if they're opposite reciprocals. And then you're going to check to see if the lengths of the sides are the same, which you can almost look at that one and tell that the lengths of the sides are the same. So it's probably, it might be a rectangle, but it's probably not going to be a rhombus. And if it's not a rhombus, then it can't be a square. Number 27, in this rectangle, so they're telling us that this shape is a rectangle, segment AC, segment AC, that goes from here to here, that whole diagonal they're telling us is negative 6x minus 2, and then they tell us, going the other way, that from here to here, from B to P, is negative 4x minus 3 and then from D to P is negative 6y minus 19. They want you to find the value of y. So that they're trying to confuse you with this because they stick a y and an x in there in the same thing. <clears throat> but what we can do here is if from P to B is 4x minus 3, then from here to here has to be 4x minus 3. And there's several different ways you can do this. And so this is 4, negative 4x minus 3, even though we already know it's negative 6y minus 19. But what we can do is just add these two together. And in a rectangle, these two parts of this diagonal added together should add up to equal that whole diagonal. So negative 4x minus 3 plus a negative 4x minus 3 should equal the whole diagonal going the other way, which is negative 6x minus 2. We really don't need plus and a minus in here together. So it's just going to be minus 4x minus 3. We collect like terms. That's a negative 8x. Collect these like terms. That's a negative 6 equals a negative 6x on this side, minus 2. Add 8x to both sides. You end up with negative 6 equals 2x minus 2. Add 2 to both sides. You end up with 2x equals a negative 4. Divide by 2. You end up with x equals negative 2. Make sure you're using your calculators and don't mess this up. Now, they didn't ask us to find x, they asked us to find y. So what we're going to have to do is take that negative 2, plug back in up here somewhere so that we can figure out what y is using that part right there. So I'm going to plug it back in uh, right there at that same spot and do negative 4 times, plugging in x, negative 2, minus 3. A negative 4 times a negative 2 is a positive 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. So this segment right here, we're saying has to be five units long. Well, then that tells us that negative 6y minus 19 has to equal five. And then we solve that. So we add 19 to both sides. These cancel out. You end up with negative 6y equals five plus 19. Grab your calculator. That's going to equal 24. Divide both sides by negative 6. Be careful when you're dividing with negatives. Y equals 24 divided by negative 6 gives you negative 4. So Y has to equal negative 4. Y equals negative 4. 28 lists all the special, special quadrilaterals. That quadrilateral ABC must be with, the, uh, with each listed property. Problem 28, they say quadrilateral ABCD. I don't know what it looks like, but we can draw it. And again, remember, if they don't give you a picture, draw it and then do what they tell you. They say segment AB is congruent to segment CD, so we know that those two are congruent. Segment BC 
is congruent to segment 80, so we know that those two are congruent. Then we just go through and check, see what it is. We know it's a quadrilateral. Uh, opposite sides are congruent, so we know it's a parallelogram. So we can list that as one of our answers. Because opposite sides are congruent. <coughs> uh, is it a rectangle? We don't know that it's a rectangle because we don't know that any of these angles are right angles. And we don't know that the diagonals are the same because they didn't tell us anything about the diagonals. Is it a rhombus? Uh, we can't say that it's a rhombus because we don't know that consecutive sides are congruent. Is it a square? We can't say it's a square because we couldn't say it was a rectangle and we couldn't say it's a rhombus. So the only special name we could give it is that one. 29. Twenty-nine. They say show that it's a quadrilateral with vertices, and they give us this. And I graphed it already. Uh, is a trapezoid? Then decide whether it is isosceles. So to decide if it's a trapezoid, remember to be a trapezoid. Two of the sides have to be parallel. Well, I look at my shape, and it looks like that segment CB is probably parallel to segment AD. So I'm going to find the slopes of segment CB and the slope of segment AD. Slope of CB, my rise, one, two, three, four, five. So I go up five, and I go left to right, zero. So rise over runs, five over zero. Remember, you can't divide by zero, so that means the segment CB, because it's vertical, doesn't have a slope. Segment AD, you do the same thing. Find the slope of it. Rise, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So like we go up 9, we go left to right 0, can't divide by 0. Since these two are both vertical, they both have no slope, uh, then we know that their slopes are the same. And if their slopes are the same, then we know that they are parallel. So if that's the case, then we know it is a trapezoid. It is a trapezoid. Because one pair of opposite sides are parallel, so we know that these two are parallel. Now we want to decide whether it's an isosceles trapezoid. The way we're going to decide that is if the legs, the other two sides, the two sides that weren't parallel, are congruent to each other. And we're going to use the distance formula. So we're going to do CD. We're going to find the length of segment CD by using the distance formula and find the length of segment uh, AB or BA by using the distance formula and they should be the same. <coughs> if we look at C and D, uh, for C and D we got the X coordinates are negative 2. Looking back at your paper, for C the X coordinates negative 2, for D the X coordinates 3, so negative 2 minus 3 squared plus, and then the Y coordinates for C and D are 2 and 4, so 2 minus 4 squared. Then just do the math. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 25 plus 4 is 29. Grab your calculator and you find the square root of 29. And you end up with about 5.4. Now, if this is an isosceles trapezoid, then the other one, segment BA down here, ought to come out to be the same thing. So we use points A and B. For points A and B, we got our X coordinates are 3 minus a negative 2. That's the X coordinates for A and B. Plus the Y coordinates for A and B are uh, negative 5 minus a negative 3 squared. Change the sign here, change the sign here, you end up with 3 plus 2, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 squared is 25, negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, add those two together you get the square root of 29, we just did the square root of 29 up there, and it was 5.4, since these two are the same, they're the same length, and that tells us those two legs are the same length. 
So is isosceles also. So we know that this is an isosceles trapezoid. But you've got to be able to show me this. Show me the slopes and show me that these two are the same. And that shows us that it's an isosceles trapezoid. Problem 30. In quadrilateral ABCD, uh, they want us to find the measures of the angles. So problem 30, first thing you got to do, they didn't give you a picture, so draw a picture. Doesn't matter what it looks like. It's just a four-sided figure, quadrilateral AB, CD. They tell us angle A is 8x minus 65. Angle B is 6x minus 53. Angle C is x plus 121. And angle D is 6x plus 21. They want us to find the measure of all four of those angles. Well, we know all four angles in any quadrilateral have to add up to be 360. So I'm going to collect like terms here instead of writing out some big long equation. I got 8x, I got a 6x, that's 14x's, plus another 6x is 20x's, plus Another x is 21x. That's putting all these x's together. Then I'm going to take all these numbers and use my calculator and find those. So I got a negative 65. So in your calculator, just punch in negative 65 plus a negative 53 plus 121 plus a 21. Hit equals and you end up with 23. So all of those numbers add together add up to equal 23. So all the x's 21x, all the numbers 23, and we said the four angles of any quadrilateral must always add up to 360. Subtract 23 on both sides. So take on your calculator, take 360 minus 23, end up with 337 equals 21x, divide both sides by 21, and you end up with x equals 337 divided by 21, you end up with x equals about, we'll say about 16 point, and yeah, we'll say 16.0 about 16.1 actually or somewhere around there but we'll just say 16.0. Part A said find each of those angles. So all you're going to do to find each of those angles is go back over here and plug them back in. So I'm just going to plug in 16. Uh, so if I plug in 16, grab your calculator and for this first one we do 8 times 16 and then subtract 65. So for this angle we get 63 degrees. That's one of our answers. Do the same thing for this one. 6 times 16 minus 53. That gives us 43. That's a second angle. Uh, and then do 16. Plug in 16 right there. 16 plus 121. That's 137. And then over here, you might be better off once you find three of them to just subtract, add them up, subtract from 360 because we're probably going to be a little off because we rounded off. But we'll go ahead and do it this way. 6 times 16, then add 21. And then I get 117. Now all those should add up. That's the answer to part A. All those should add up to be 360. Uh, let's see if they do 63 plus 43 plus 137 plus 117. Yep. Then part B. Uh, part B says classify the quadrilateral as a kite, trapezoid, isosceles trapezoid, justify your answer. So we knew that this angle was 63 degrees. We knew that uh, 
see the 43, that was this angle, that's 43 degrees. We knew that this angle was 137 degrees, and we knew that this angle was 117 degrees. And they want us to classify it as uh, kite trapezoid isosceles or isosceles trapezoid. None of those. All right, to be a <coughs> to be a trapezoid. Oh no, I'm sorry. It, let's see here. Three. Yeah, it's none of them. To be a trapezoid, two of the sides would have to be parallel to each other, uh, and looking at the angles. That doesn't work out where any two sides are parallel. And to be a kite, at least two of the angles have to be the same as each other. Two of the opposite angles have to be the same as each other. And ne neither one of them are. So it's none of them. I hope I didn't miss any problems there. I don't think I did. Uh, so on 33, 33 through 36, we're going to use the same thing over and over uh, for those four problems. And I just drew this little chart here. First thing, I'm going to check see if it's quadrilateral. Then check see if it's parallelogram. Then check see if it's a rectangle. Then check see if it's a rhombus. If it's a rectangle and a rhombus, then the best name we can give it's a square. If we check see if it's parallelogram and it's not, then we check see if it's a trapezoid, or we check see if it's a. So 33. First, to be a parallelogram, five different ways it could be a parallelogram. We just look at this, and this is the easy one. These two sides are parallel, those two sides are parallel. So yes, we know it's a parallelogram. Then we check, see if it's a rectangle. Remember to be a rectangle. If it's a parallelogram, it's just got to have one right angle. This one has a right angle in it, so yes, we know it's a rectangle. Then we check, see if it's a rhombus. Uh, to be a rhombus, two consecutive sides, two sides that are hooked together have to be congruent to each other. or uh, the diagonals are perpendicular, uh, or the diagonals bisect the angles. Those are all ways it could be a rhombus. We don't know any of that information, so we can't say it's a rhombus. Well, uh, if it's not a rhombus, then we know it, we can't say it's a square, so the best name we can give this one is a rectangle. The most descriptive name would be a rectangle. 34. Is it a quadrilateral? Yes, it's got four sides. Is it a parallelogram? We can say it's a parallelogram because the diagonals bisect each other. They split each other into uh, two congruent parts, so we know it's a parallelogram. Uh, then we check to see if it's a rectangle. Uh, if we look at this diagonal and it's got one tick mark here, one tick mark here. We look at this diagonal, it's got one here, one here, so those two diagonals are the same because uh, if we add them up, they'd both be the same length. So yes, it's a rectangle. Then we look at a rhombus next. Since it's got a right angle in here where the diagonals come together, the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So yes, it's got to be a rhombus. Well, if it's a rectangle and a rhombus, then the best name we can give it is a square. 35. All right, looking at 35, first thing we check, is it a quadrilateral? Yes. Then we got to check, see if it's a parallelogram. To be a parallelogram, five ways to prove it's a parallelogram. Opposite sides are congruent. We don't know enough information for that. Uh, diagonals bisect each other. We don't know the other diagonal. Uh, opposite angles are congruent. We don't know enough information for that. Let's see what else. Opposite sides are parallel. We don't know that. And uh, then the fifth way is one, one pair of sides are parallel and congruent to each other. We don't know that. So we cannot say it's a parallelogram. So even though we look at this and we see that this diagonal bisects one of the angles, 
and that these two sides are congruent to each other, we can't say it's a parallelogram. So we can't. We don't even worry about whether it's a rectangle, a rhombus, or a square. We jump over here and we see it. Maybe it's a trapezoid. If it's a trapezoid, uh, one of the pairs of sides have to be parallel. We don't know that. It could be a kite because these two sides are congruent to each other, but we don't know that uh, these two sides are congruent. So it might be a kite. Um, we do know that one of the, the diagonals bisects the angles and for one of them, so that would work, but it's sort of backwards. So the best name we can give this one, quadrilateral. Best name we can give it is quadrilateral. We can't use any of the rest of them. 36. We do 36 right here. Thirty-six is it quadrilateral? Yes, it's got four sides. Is it a parallelogram? Yes, because the diagonals bisect each other. Is it a rectangle? Yes, because it has a right angle, and we know that the diagonals are the same length because they're all marked the same. Is it a rhombus? Well, we don't have enough information to say it's a rhombus, and if we don't have enough to say it's a rhombus, then we can't say whether it's a square or not, so the best name we can give it is a rectangle. 37, they give us a picture of this school sign. They say a school si crossing sign is shown. Uh, notice that these are all three right angles. These two angles are congruent to each other. Then they say find the sum of the measures of the exterior angles. So we really don't care anything about all these angles. All we care about is the exterior angles. And we know that the sum of the exterior angles of any polygon, no matter what it is, is 360 degrees. So that would be your answer for 37. 38, they give us that picture there, uh, the constellation Ophicus. You have to ask one of your science teachers to pronounce that for you correctly. And they tell us angle D and angle F are congruent to each other. <coughs> well, we count the sides of that uh, constellation. When they connected all the stars together, we got one, two, three, four, five, looks like six. So we could do this, N minus two times 180. Figure out all six angles of a hexagon. So six minus two times 180. Hopefully, you know, you start to know that's four. Uh, that in any hexagon, all six angles must add up to be 720. So we can take 720. And however you do this, I don't care if you set it up as an equation, like I'm getting ready to 84 plus 140 plus 87 plus 105 plus x plus the other angle, which is x also. All that should equal 720. As long as you're getting the right answer, it doesn't matter. You could take your calculator and you could have just subtracted all those off of 720. Um, so I'm going to take my calculator now since I set it up this way and add them all up. 84 plus 140 plus 87 plus 105. See what that all equals, equals 416 plus x and x, give you 2x, equals 720. Take 720 and subtract off the 416. You're left with 2x equals, so just grab your calculator again. 720 minus 416, you got 304. Divide that by 2, and your x is going to be what your angles are. Uh, they ask you to find both angles, so both angles are actually going to end up being the same, so we take 304 divided by 2, and you end up with 152, so your two answers should be 152 degrees and 152 degrees. For any rhombus ABCD, it is always or sometimes true that AC is congruent to BD. First thing you got to do here, draw. They're telling us it's a rhombus. I grew it, drew it to look like a square. That doesn't really matter, but label it then. A, B, C, D. Make sure you 
you're going around it either clockwise or counterclockwise. They say AC, that's the length of this diagonal, is the same as BD for any rhombus. Is that always true? No, some rhombuses, the diagonals aren't congruent. If the rhombus happens to be a square, uh, then it is true. So sometimes, and your reason would be only if the rhombus is a square. So only if that rhombus happens to be a square is that true where the diagonals are the same. Number 40, for any rectangle, PQRS. So I'm going to draw this again. PQRS. This time they're telling us it's a rectangle. Segment PS is perpendicular to segment QP. So for any rectangle, they're saying that those two right there come together to form a right angle. Is that true for all rectangles? Yes, because all four angles in a rectangle have to be right angles. So that's always and our reason, it's always, and our reason is because rectangles have four right angles. Rectangles always have four right angles. 41. For any rectangle EFGH, so I'm going to draw this, and it doesn't have to look like a re rectangle, just draw it, but you need to draw it so that you can have some idea what you're looking at. Uh, EH, segment EH is congruent to segment GH, segment EH is congruent to segment GH. Is that true for all rectangles, or is that true some of the time? And that's some of, sometimes. So sometimes, and it's only if the rectangle is a square. Only if it's a square are those two consecutive sides going to be congruent to each other. It would still be a rectangle, but a better name for it would be a square. But that only works some of the times. Not for every rectangle. <coughs> for rectangle ABCD, ABCD, uh, AB is congruent to CD. And a rectangle, if they tell us the shape is a rectangle, do we always know that those two segments are congruent or are they only congruent some of the times? And, and since they're opposite sides, it's always. Always. And our reason, opposite sides in a rectangle are always congruent or equal. Forty-three. The diagram shows that the supports of a motorcycle lift are connected uh, by a bolt at their midpoints. Explain why a motorcycle placed on the lift will always be parallel to the ground for any set height. So we have this. The ground's down here. You got your lift here. They're saying that that right there is a midpoint. They want to want you to explain why wherever this motorcycle is setting up here wherever that motorcycle is setting it's always going to be parallel to the ground as you lower this or raise it what's going to happen here is since these two diagonals can't change and they're always going to be the same lengths this shape is always going to have to be a rectangle so if we're looking at that, uh, we can say it's always going to be parallel, always parallel to the ground.
because segment because AB is parallel to DC and uh, ABCD is always going to be a rectangle. Because diagonals are congruent to each other. These the lengths of these two diagonals that you've got going down through here, they're never going to change. So as long as those two lengths are always the same, as that goes up, it's going to stay parallel to the ground. Number 44, find the number of sides a regular polygon must have so that the interior angle measure equals each exterior angle measure. Justify your answer. So we want every interior angle to equal every exterior angle. So we could set up an equation like this where n minus 2 times 180 divided by n should equal 360 divided by n. I would hope that you would know this by now what kind of shape is going to have an interior angle and an exterior, a regular polygon that's going to have an interior angle and an exterior angle equal. But if not, we'll do it this way. The way we can uh, the way we can do this is we could cross multiply and try to solve it that way. I'm not sure if this is the easiest way to do it or not, but it's going to be n times n minus 2 times 180. So I just took this n times everything on top there and that should equal n times 360 or 360 times n. Now what we can do here to make it a little easier on ourselves so we don't have to factor or nothing else, we got an n here, we got an n here, they can sort of just cancel each other out. So we get n minus 2 times 180 should equal 360. Divide both sides by 180. You end up with n minus 2 equals 360. Uh, divided by 180 is 2. Add 2 to both sides. You end up with n equals 4. Well, what that's telling you is the shape has to be a four-sided figure, which is a quadrilateral. The only regular quadrilateral, or the only regular polygon where an interior angle so if this is your interior angle and this is your exterior angle, that's your exterior, that's your interior. The only one where they're going to end up being the same is where they're both 90. And the only shape that that is is a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure, and it, uh, it has to be a square or a rectangle. Actually, it has to be a square because it's regular. But all they ask you to do was find the number of sides, so your answer there is just four but it would have to be a square because they said it was a regular four-sided figure. 45. Find the number of sides a regular polygon must have if the interior angle measures 150 degrees. Well, if each interior angle equals 150 degrees, we could set up this formula, n minus 2 times 180 divided by n. That's the formula for each interior angle. And set that equal to 50 and solve that. But it's probably easier to just do each exterior angle. Because the formula for each exterior angle is 360 divided by n. Well, if the interior angle is 150, all we've got to do to find an exterior angle is 180 minus 150, which is 30. So if we do that, then we could just put a 1 underneath this, cross multiply, and you end up with 
30 times n equals 360 times 1 is 360. Divide both sides by 30. These cancel out, and you're left with n equals, remember, if you're looking for n, it's got to come up to be an even number. 30 will go into 36 once with 6 left over. 30 will go into 60 twice. So the number of sides would be n would have to equal 12. Forty-six. They give us a picture of that staircase there. I'm not going to draw the whole staircase, but it looks something like this. They tell us this is 70 inches, this is 70 inches, this is 36 inches, this is 36 inches. Uh, they say in the diagram, represent two posts, the staircase, explain how you know that the top rail AB of the banister is parallel to the bottom rail. Uh, and we know that because since opposite sides are congruent, we know that this 70 is congruent to that 70, this 36 is congruent to that 36, then AB, CD, is a parallelogram. And if it's a parallelogram, then opposite sides are also parallel to each other. So that means the top post must be parallel to the bottom post. Forty-seven, same as what we were doing in uh, forty-five. Says find the number of sides in a regular polygon so that each interior angle is one hundred sixty-two. Again, we could do n minus two times one hundred eighty divided by n equals one hundred sixty-two. But it's easier to find each exterior angle. That's one hundred sixty-two is each interior angle. Each exterior angle, you just subtract that from one hundred eighty and you end up with 18. So each exterior angle should be 18 degrees, and the formula for each exterior angle is 360 divided by n, which would be equal 18. So the one underneath this, cross multiply, you end up with 18 times n equals 360. Divide both sides by 18. These cancel out, you end up with n equals 20. So that means the shape's got to have 20 sides. It's got to uh, be a 20 gallon. Number 48, last one. Forty-eight. I'll try to draw this, see if I can draw it sort of. Not real good. They tell us these angles are all congruent to each other. Part A. Is the polygon regular? Explain your reasoning. <clears throat> and we're going to say not sure. And the reason we're not sure is uh, don't know if all these sides are congruent. We're not sure if all these segments are congruent or not. They might be, doesn't look like it in the picture, but they might be. Part B though, we do know, even though it's not regular, we do know that all the angles are congruent. So that tells us it's equal angular. It says find the measure of each angle. So we just count it. how many sides it's got. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's an octagon. And we want to find the measure of each of those angles. Since they're all the same, we're just going to uh, use this formula n minus 2 times 180, where n is 8, so 8 minus 2 times 
times 180. Grab your calculator again. That's 6 times 180. 6 times 180. We've probably done this a couple of times already. It is 1080. So we know that all those angles should add up to equal 1080. Well, since all the angles are the same, all we got to do is divide that 1080 by how many angles it has, which is 8. So take your calculator again and take 1080 divided by 8. And we know that each angle is 135 degrees. So each of those angles has to be 135 degrees on this uh, octagon.